I was determined to find Sumithros. Over the past few months, I have, all, I have been all but invisible to the people in the palace. It's allowed me to pass undisturbed. I've always figured it was because no one remembered who I was with my curse. But today, things are different. A maid sweeping the hallway jumps beside me before quickly curtsying. Your Highness. I was going to give that to Abby because she's been sitting no. there quietly. That's true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure bomb time's coming soon. True, true, true. Her eyes are downcast and she does not look up at me as I pass by her. As I walk past her, two other servants heading my direction also moves to the side of the hallway. We'll let Abby sleep in. Your Highness. Highness. I remember who I am now? But how? Is my curse somehow been broken? I spend the other morning searching for Sir Mithros. He's nowhere to be found. The only room I have yet to search is the throne room. Uh oh. I push open the doors and walk inside. There, I'm met with an unexpected sight. The king sits on his throne, his posture regal, but his eyes downcast. Majesty? He doesn't look up when I enter, but I can see that his eyes are stony, unmoving. I approach, approach him cautiously, and upon closer look, I notice now his eyes look so empty. It's almost as if he cannot see me. I inhale and something catches in my throat. My heart begins to beat rapidly. What have they done to you? My princess. I whirl around and see Sir Mithros approaching me with a smile. Where did he come from? Magic. I could have sworn there was no one else in here when I entered. Sir Mithros? Oh, it's a neat trick called Spider Climb. I'll teach it to you later. Anyway. Oh god, that's disgusting! <laughs> <laughs> I was just on my way to see you. Varg told me you had awakened. What's wrong with the king? Physically, there's nothing wrong with him at all. Yep, there and it is. It begins to burn within me. You swore that you wouldn't harm him. Is he not alive, my princess? Not if he's a vegetable. Take a good look at him. The king is completely unharmed. The change in Sir Mithros' expression is subtle, but I can feel the malice in his gaze. That's why you're always careful when making deals with witches in the Fae. <laughs> I should add that it was difficult to keep this promise, princess. Also, you should learn about things called technicalities and fine print. <laughs> My queen will be having words with you about this. Mother? Where is she? She has left the palace for the time being. I can already hear the screams in the town. <laughs> <laughs> You've been unconscious for my queen could not spend every moment fretting by your bedside. Joke's on you, I'm pretty sure it was just Fritz and Farg. I was gonna say, so she spent none. But didn't Farg say he was the only one to stay by my side? I shake the thought from my mind. When will I be seeing her? Dinner. Soon. <laughs> I assume. Now, if that's all. Wait. Sir Mithros pauses abruptly. Like, oh, come on, I have to water the vegetable. <laughs> he just pours a glass of water over the king. The servants I met in the hallway seem to remember me. How? You really cannot guess? He says, runs a hand through his hair. They didn't kill Delora, did they? Okay. No. Okay. It became the Tenebrarum Bearer. The curse that the lesser witch cast on you broke. Ooh. What? Moments before your mother woke, you were the strongest witch in all of Angiel. The lesser witch's spell could not have any effect over you. Oh god, I don't have to learn what good deeds are. Congratulations. You are no longer a victim of the curse. You game sharked. Your life is, way is back to the way it was before. Now, is there anything else you would like to ask me? Why are you such a bitch? Yes, there is. Your hair, no. About Fritz. Hmm. Do we demand his curses removed, or do we ask to break it? 
Well, we know he can't. Remo they can't remove their curses from. If I remember what Delora said. Yeah, ask him how to break it then. Yeah, I say. Yeah, because cool. I mean. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Delora even told Luce that she couldn't break her curse, even if she wanted to. Man, I'm just waiting for Mom to show up. Right. I don't remember what her outfit is. Much to my astonishment, Sir Mithros begins to laugh. The sound is cruel and so sharp and deadly it cuts through whatever hope has been forming in my heart. Dylan, if you would care to demonstrate. <laughs> I'll pass for now, thanks. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> you wish to break you his curse. You wish to break his curse. Oh, princess, you should have told me earlier you cared so much about the boy. Oh no, is it too late? Perhaps then I would have tailored his curse to your requirements. That's disgusting. Poor upstanding chivalrous Fritz. Anyways, he was too much of a knight for his father's liking. Oh, hello there. Oh, Jesus! Sir Mithros leaves Why, closer to me. <laughs> so close I could see the crazed gleam in his eyes. Would you like to know why I cursed him, princess? Because his dad needed a soldier or a servant, he already said. I remained rude in place, but not flinching away from Mithros. It's harder than I would have thought. Sir Alcaster approached his son for help, expecting him to help kill the king and take over the throne. But Fritz refused. Sir Alcaster needed an obedient servant, and Fritz deserved for be to be punished for stepping out of line. Can't fire his own son. No. And so I removed those memories of Alcaster telling Fritz of his devious plan and gave him the curse. Fritz has the Little Red Riding Hood curse. There is, after all, no better servant than the Big Bad Wolf. He has all the power and drive of a predator, but is still so obedient. Wolves are closely related to dogs, after all. Better yet, the big bad wolf will always stay close to the lady he desires to devour. Oh, he has to kill her for it. Oh, no. He has to kill her to break it. Oh, Pro shit. Probably. That's awkward. I wonder if Varg knows, because then maybe he might say... I can feel disgust seething in my stomach. But if, like, that's the case, though, he's always slipped away in the other lines unless he just knows that, oh, yeah, no, she's gonna break this thing. I don't have to do anything. I don't know. I created the... Oh, wait, no, that's not I me. I have created the perfect servant for Sir, Sir Alcaster. In short... Sir Mithra suddenly reaches out a hand and grabs my face by the chin. He forces my head up at a painful angle. There is no breaking... His curse, princess, not unless, unless Fritz is somehow able to mentally overpower Varg. And we all know how formidable Varg is. Sir Mithras releases me. Now put the idea out of your pretty little head. Don't you already have everything you've ever wanted? He smiles wryly before turning and walking out of the throne room, leaving me alone and trembling. Break the curse, Fritz has to overthrow Varg in his own mind. It's not. A sudden cold descends upon me. I wrap my arms around myself and shudder. Well, I mean, like, in a way, Fritz is kind of like the woodcutter, so it kind of makes sense. Because if Varg killed her, that would yeah, Okay. Because if Varg killed her, that wouldn't be breaking the curse. He'd still be Varg. Good point, good point, okay. I turn to look at the knight, but he has not moved since my encounter with Sir Mithros. Your majesty, did I do this to you? Mother. If she were here, she could make sense of it for me. Mother, where are you? I stare at my now trembling hands. This is not what I wanted at all. <laughs> okay, hi, Knight A. Princess, we, we cannot... I am the crown princess. Which is why we can't allow you to leave on your own, your highness. It's strange to think just a few months ago, these same men did everything they could to keep me out of the palace. Your highness, you'll need an escort if you want to leave. I 
me take care of myself. I categorically oh, disagree. Back to being a nuisance, I see. Talk about oh, perfect, Jesus! Talk about perfect timing. Oh, shit. Sir. Like I like how every single one of his entrances is pushed through between two people. <laughs> he's like, I. He's yeah. like, he's such a drama. Just walk, he's come just... on from stage left or something. <laughs> nah, he's like, no, I, I need am to be a drama true. queen. <laughs> he just like shoves people out of like, boom. <laughs> Hello, I am here. Notice me in my fancy outfit. <laughs> look, look at this Notice cape. Notice me in my fantastic. Every time he walks away, he swishes cape? that cape. No, well now you have. <laughs> Let me smack you in the face with it. It's all, it's all about the dramatic entrance. All right, I watch. For some, the dramatic exit. I watch in stunned silence as both soldiers salute to Varg. Varg turns to smirk at me. Well, what's going on here? The, the princess wishes to leave the palace to visit the town. Does she now? I can feel Varg's eyes on me, but I refuse to look at him. Fine. Then I will accompany her. But the queen said. Their words die at the man's throat as Varg turns to glower at him. His eyes flash with impatience, and it's enough to coax the soldier into silence. Open the gates. Open the gates. Yes, sir. Oh, that's an actual sound effect. The gates swing open. I rush out, thinking maybe if I move fast enough, I can lose Varg. Ma'am, his legs are longer than yours. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, what are we here for? I need you to carry all of my bags, and then I'm gonna hey, run Willie. away. <laughs> hey, Willie, I bet you 50 bucks he just pulls an Essex and flies. <laughs> so I tried my yeah. hardest to yeah. shake him. Far is still irritatingly close. It's impossible to leave him. Princess. Bar cleans out and wraps the fingers around my elbow, pulling me into a stop in the shadows of an alleyway. My irritation is immediate, and I look up to glare at him. Being in town. As much as I don't want to agree with those idiot knights, you really shouldn't be wandering the streets. My next words are cold and sharp. Why not? Before, that was what everyone insisted I do. And now the only thing everyone wants is for me to stay indoors. Fargy silent for a few moments before finally let her out an exasperated sigh. NGL is not where it was, princess. What are you talking about? Varg places his hands on my shoulders and turns me so that I'm looking out into the streets. This is... I'm not overly familiar with the kingdom, but even I can tell that something is off. The shops that have once been colorful display windows are now empty. Their displays are dull or non-existent. The liveliness of the market stalls is all but gone. My gaze is drawn to the bakery shop that Fritz had taken me all those months ago. Its thin windows tell me that it's closed. There are so many different sweets here. Buy whatever you like. Are you certain? Absolutely. I know nothing makes you happier than a good pastry. How do you know that? Well, well, it is a knight's job to know these sorts of things. Just how much do you know about me? Nothing that anyone else would know. What's my favorite color? Blue. My favorite flower? Lilies. 
I told you that these croissants were famous, right? Those were my favorite. I'll get a croissant then. Not a custard Danish? I thought you liked those best. Uh. Now she's just being difficult. <laughs> I think she just wants well, yeah. to try something. She wants to try something <laughs> he likes for once because he bothered to remember stuff she likes. <laughs> a croissant, of course. Right away. An all too familiar egg beats in my chest. Aww. Has it been that long since that day? Everything was so vibrant and full of energy back then. The palace was so lively and there was music that filled the streets and performances everywhere. But now... Everyone's dead. So much has changed. It's so silent. The streets are so empty and the eyes of the people... Their eyes are glazed and unseen, just like the king's. I step forward to give Barlow a up, realizing. I'm only dimly aware of Varg's hands, which have not moved from my shoulders. What happened? The queen happened. But the people... She can take control and can demand obedience. But she cannot force love or loyalty. The people of Angiel are being crushed, Princess. And they know who's responsible for it. Varg's voice is hushed, but he still draw he still draws theirs. I flinch back at the expression on the people's faces as they look at us. There's fear in their eyes. I instinctively retreat until I fall back into Varg, his hands tighten on my shoulders. They know that you're her daughter. These are the looks they have always given me. This is why they have feared me. Abruptly, Varg draws his cape around me, enclosing me in darkness. Please tell me he can teleport. When light flares back to my consciousness, I'm facing... Oh shit, he face. can teleport. I guess so. Cool. Now we know. Uh, what, what did, did you, you do? Teleport. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> it's all just smoke and mirrors. Things might have gotten out of hand back there, if I... so I got us out. He simply releases me and nudges me forward. Can we return to the palace now? I grit my teeth. I still want to see the town, but is it impossible to think that the entire place is so changed? How is that possible? Signifer said mother was out. I really need to see her. It's almost dinner time, princess. It's like he just knows or something. Your family will be expecting you. Mother will be expecting me. I should see her at dinner, right? Thinking about everything that's transpired exhausts me. I rub my eyes and sigh. Fine, let us return. Oh yeah, I still have future lupus. <laughs> I wanted time to come in with that, Willie. When I enter the what? dining hall- We're talking about dinner, I'm like, oh yeah, I, have, I still have Taco Bell. Oh my god. When I enter the dining hall, a familiar figure stands by one of the windows. I've not oh. seen her for four years, but she remains unchanged. Finally. Ready for your big moment, Abby? Finally! Standing before me is the only person whose love I have never doubted. Mother! Uh, what am I wearing? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> PJ? Yes. Also, why is Very she so tan? That is not a shirt. What is going on? It's a gown. Why is she so tan? Her daughter's pale as a freaking ghost. Well, she stays inside in her defense. Okay, fantastic question. Whoops to the fuck? Her, mama. D I don't <laughs> care. Who the fuck? She got her dad's eyes. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, my dearest one. I moved toward her immediately, like a moth drawn a flame. Soon I have my arms wrapped around her in a hug. I do not care that I'm crying. You don't even care she hasn't been next to your bed for a week? It was just your edgy slash wholesome boyfriend? <laughs> Mother. I missed uh, you she so much. She was busy much. taking over the- she was busy taking over a country. <laughs> and I have missed you. I cannot believe that Mother is indeed alive. I'm crying so hard, tears blur my eyes, and it takes effort to speak. I thought you died. Mother presses a soft, cool hand to my cheek. Her touch is more comforting than I remember. 
and it is thanks to you that I did not. I am so proud of you, love. I had thought her warmth would envelop me deeper, or longer, but Mother is quick to draw away from me. I look up her in confusion and flinch when I see her gaze is cold. But I heard you left the palace today. Fucking snitches. <laughs> what have I told you about leaving the palace, you said? I just... No excuses. You know my feelings on this. But... Have you truly become so disrespectful while I was absent? I... Let's not fight. Not tonight. Can I talk for starters? <laughs> yes, mother. Yeah, pretty no. much. <laughs> Come, sit. I take my usual chair and stare at the now vacant seats in front of me. There's a heaviness in my chest as I remember who sat in them. Those are Ophelia, Rod, and Emmeline's places. And the king... I turn to look at him and feel my heart falter, then sink. Lucette? The king is sitting in his usual seat, but his expression is as vacant as it was earlier. <coughs> it's nothing. Mother follows my line of sight and frowns. Ah, uh, Mithros told me of your request. I had not anticipated that you would require something from him in exchange for reviving me. But no matter. I had no desire to see Alcaster's plans come to fruition. Where is Sir Alcaster? Blew that motherfucker up. My mother beckons <laughs> quietly with a wave of her hand, and the servant begins to place pliers of food on the table. Exiled. There is no place in this kingdom for a snake like him. Then why is Vark still here? Amar looks at me with knowing eyes as the servant spoons soup into our bowls. You still need a guard, my dear. Oh, goodness. It was... Fortuitous. Fortuitous. Thank you. Fortuitous of me to return him, considering your actions today. Damn, her vocabulary is pretentious. I look yes. down. You don't say. It's almost like she's an evil queen. <laughs> I look down, my mind racing. But enough, enough of these inconsequential notions. We must discuss your training. What? You are the crown princess, and you must learn how to be a queen. Eventually, you too shall become the Tenenbaum bearer. I will show you how to control it. It was impossible for me to think of Mother as a witch. But seeing how she speaks so casually with Tenenbaum, and considering all that's happened this week, I have no choice but to believe it. Why did you not tell me about the Tenenbaum? About the witches? Dearest one, you were so young. I wanted to protect you. And it is no matter now, for I am here. I will teach you through practical demonstration. I have always found that to be the most effective way. She looks at me sharply. Ooh. Oh no. We, <laughs> we will begin by punishing those that cursed you. Fear and shock immediately flood through me. What? Punish Parfait and Dolora? <laughs> they have acted to keep you from me and from your destiny. They must be punished. Don't you wish for revenge on those that have wronged you so? Hmm. I think we should protest. What are you guys protest think? Protest would be the right thing to do. Protest would be the correct would be the right thing, but I think the safe one is stay silent. Maybe. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so you're on the fence. What do you think, Abby? I agree that protest would right. be what I. Wait, 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 wait. But the, I feel like whatever she says, the mom's not going to care. So it might Probably. be safer to be true. I mean, she's still going to burn the place but down. It's but... going to have an influence on what Varg slash Fritz thinks, so. though. I feel like in Varg's case, like, Varg, since this is supposed to be about Fritz in the first place, protest would be the most appropriate thing I for Fritz. I feel like it. Yeah, let's do it. I do not want revenge. 
Well, there's six dollars, Spoon. Dearest one, need I remind you of how the people of this world will seek to abuse your nature and your position in order to use you? Have you not experienced the selfishness and greed of people firsthand? Kind of like her simp. Were you not cursed by such people? You're right. But the worm, Parfait. They have been kind to me as well. Mother goes back to eating. Regardless, we shall start your lessons tomorrow. For some reason, my eyes are drawn once more to the king. He's not moved since dinner began. His soup is still untouched. The king is barely conscious. Mother is right here, so close to me, and yet nothing feels right. You will succeed me in all things, my daughter. Mother speaks, and my attention snaps back to her. I expect nothing but your full devotion to this task. I mechanically bring a spoon to my of soup to my mouth and swallow without tasting. Could I really punish anyone? Oh, dearest one. Mother's voice pulls me away from my thoughts. She reaches over and brushes my hair away from my face. Her touch is breakingly familiar. Heartbreakingly familiar. She's right here, but I feel like this is the most distant I've ever been from her. We're never going to be separated again. Chapter 8. Uprising. Lucette? I cannot do this. You are not trying hard enough. But I... It is almost as if, as if you do not wish to complete your training. Ever since Mother came back, she's been teaching me to use my magic, but her methods are... Well, I cannot bring myself to agree the, with the way she teaches. But this is... A little bird, no more. But the bird is alive! It's been trying to escape the dumb it's been trapped under this whole time. Your bleeding heart will be the end of us, Suzette. Do you feel such turmoil every time you have a meal? Do I need to remind you how many animals are killed on a daily basis just for your meals? But this is different. Why can't Mother see that? All you are doing is removing the air in the dome. This is a lesson about control. How else are we to tell when you are successful without such a bar <laughs> barometer? Barometer. I'm having struggles today. <laughs> we are. Mother raises her hand without any apparent effort, manipulates the air inside the dome. Now, you see how simple it is? I stare at the bird's lifeless body inside the dome. The sight of it brings back old memories. This happened before, and even when I was not able to save the bird's life, I still could not save anything. And because you hesitated, another bird must be brought in. How many birds will it take, Lucette? <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to focus, dearest heart. We will continue tomorrow, and yeah. I expect to perform as expected. Do you understand? Lucette. I nod my head dumbly. Mother opens her arms and beckons me toward her. I reluctantly step toward her that she can embrace me. There's no more warmth in her embrace. There's nothing. Mother strokes my hair. Before I found the gesture endearing and comforting. But now, I feel cold. I do this because I love you, Lucette. You understand, yes? I... The words I want to say are trapped in my throat. I can't... Mother pulls back, questioning look in her eyes. Say you love me, darling. Of course I love you. I do love her, but things are different now. I cannot deny who she is or what she can do. Mother sighs heavily before releasing me and turning around. Varg. The door opens and Varg steps inside immediately. He kneels before us. 
Your Majesty. Take my daughter back to her room. As you command. Rai grazes and rises and bows before going to. Excuse me. Holds the, open the door for me. Princess. Good night, mother. I curtsy and follow Varg out to the throne room. Ever since Frisk disappeared the day I woke up, he has not returned. Hope that he would return and that Varg would be destroyed is slowly disappearing. Every morning I wake and find Varg standing outside my door. I become more disheartened. I look at Varg's back as he walks in front of me. How am I supposed to bring Varg <coughs> back? Varg is only getting stronger each day. At this rate, Fritz will... Adiuva. You know that that will not work on me anymore, princess. Fritz used to come when I said that word, but I no longer see any signs that he hears me. Worried about your knife? Let me tell you something that might lift your spirits, then. He's not gone. What? He doesn't think he can afford to lose. He's not giving up control without a fight. Persistent little insect. Just thought you might want to know. Why are you telling me this? You haven't been yourself the past few days. But why do you care? He just woke up this morning. She just woke up this morning. Of course she wasn't herself. Well, it's been a while. No, no, no. It's no, like, it's, it's been, been, it's been, it's been weeks. Days. Like, it's lapsed. Oh, okay. Varg stops Time's and turns to look at me. He's looking at me the same way Fritz always does, with gentle acceptance. I can almost believe I'm looking at Fritz and not Varg. I've been asking myself the same question. I know these feelings for you aren't my own, and yet... Feelings for me. I guess his emotions for you are too strong. It's rubbed off on me, and now I'm stuck caring about you too. Varg's expression changes, a subtle sadness creeping into his eyes. Stupid. We both know you'll choose when the time comes. Who you'll choose when the time comes. What? Varg smiles, but is devoid of any cheer. He turns around and continues walking without waiting for me. Hurry up, princess. The rest of our walk is silent. I'm kind of sad in its own little way. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. Night is deep, dark, and gentle, but I cannot find peace and sleep or the all-consuming silence. It's been two weeks since Mother's return, and two weeks since I've been able to sleep through the night. Most of my days are spent at Mother's side. When we aren't patrolling Andriel, she is teaching me how to use the Tenumbarum, readying me as her successor. Every day it only becomes clear to me that the kingdom is suffering. The people fear and hate us. It's even worse than it was before. Mother is cruel to everyone even though I have yet to see them do anything wrong. Is that why father hated her? Someone be a man. Sure. Uh, you, 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 your Highness. I beg your forgiveness. My, my child was not watching where he was going. The man suddenly wandered out in front of us. The soldier's horses would have crushed the child to Manhattan, pushed him all the way. The stop on the road has caused the delay on our arrival back to the palace. The one that had been out visiting an old friend, a witch. Mother? There's a blinding flash of light as Mother draws a shape in the air. In the light clear, the man has disappeared in from in front of us. He has collapsed Jesus. against the wall of a nearby building. Mother threw him into the building? Let us continue. But Mother, that man isn't moving. I don't think he's breathing. Come along, Lucette. Mother, why did you do that? That man, he... Are you questioning me, Lucette? 
Mother's gaze is cold as steel. Her eyes are sharp as a blade. I flinch away from her. You have become soft. The world has changed you while I was sleeping. Do not worry, dearest heart. I will bring you back to what you were. I promise. Mother smiled at me then, the same smile she would always give me when I was a child. I used to be comforted by the sight of it, but now it terrifies me. And the king... I choked down the lump in my throat. He's gone. He speaks, he eats, but he's not here. If it were not clear in his actions, it's clear when I look into his eyes. He's right there, and yet, I miss him. Frustration makes me restless. I stand up so I can make my way towards the window and stare outside. I'm being ridiculous. Why should I miss him when he's been nothing but neglectful? I've forgotten how he stopped caring about me when he invited his new family into the palace. He treasured them in his kingdom more than he ever loved me. He never valued me. And yet, I would give anything to go back to how things had been. The weight on my shoulders and in my heart are, is overwhelming. The feeling even worsens when I turn my thoughts to another person. Fritz. With a sigh, I lean my forehead against the cool glass of the window. Varg said that Fritz is still fighting, so he must still be in there. How can I help him? Fritz? Who? Before I can turn, someone clamps a hand over my mouth. The rest of my words are muffled. <gasps> I'm guessing Delora. <laughs> Long time no see. That voice. Oh no, it's Durian. Okay, that was me. Close. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> Dang! It would have been funnier if it was Delora. That's it right. Would've. Remain calm, princess. She slowly lowers her hand. I turn around and stare, surprised to see her here in my room. How? What are you doing here? She smiles and some of the weight in my heart lifts. We're on a rescue mission. We. How? At the moment, a man sidesteps in the doorway. Oh, His footsteps no. cautious and soft. Well, the margin is the margin's hidden from bad witches, so. They are literally in the middle of the castle with evil witch mom, like probably within a hundred feet. She, How? She probably doesn't think she has to send her magic out to search for infiltrators, and they're probably counting on that bluff, so Delora might have them shielded. I don't know. Garland? He does not turn completely, but cranes his neck to give him <coughs> a soft smile. Glad to see you're safe, princess. I can barely believe that two of them are standing here. It's been so long. Where's my buddy? We apologize for being late. We've been trying to get into the palace for the past few months, but a powerful shield has been keeping us from entering. Lady Parfait could easily destroy it, but would have meant destroying the palace as well. Last thing we want is to cause panic among the people. Jeez. And Varg are crafty. They've been watching over the palace like hawks. And it was difficult to speak with Prince Rod when he was being watched around the clock. We needed more time to make sure a rescue mission would not fail. How did you find a way inside? Lady Parfait managed to find a weak spot in the shield, but it's thin, and only allows a few people in the palace at one time. Garland and I know this place better than anyone. That's why we're here to rescue you. Oh, not Rod. Then Lady Fay wanted to come, but the shield easily detects witches and fairies. But they're waiting for us at the Marchin Princess. They just announced really that Rod's being watched a lot, so that's why. Uh. Was I meant to escape with Rod and Emmeline before? Yes, that was the only other plan we had, though it didn't go as expected when someone caught a whiff of their plans and sent Varg out to kill them. So they tried to save me before and failed. Oh, I don't know. Why did you come for me? I mean, why did you come for me? Why did you come for me seems fitting. Okay, yeah. They're probably gonna call her stupid, but. Please don't be sour. Oh, why did you come for me? They look at me, their expressions baffled. What? I cross my arms as I look at them. Why would you rescue someone you hate? Princess? Of course, course. we'd come for you. You're part of the march and after all. What? Jurian looks at me seriously. Let's go. Jurian heads towards the door but stops when she notices that I'm not following her. Coming, princess. 
How can the merchant take me back after everything I've said and done? How could the merchant accept me back? Do they even want me to return? Well, I realize that's spoken aloud when Jurgen answers me. Princess, we wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. We have to leave now. We're running out of time. Think about this later. I nod and follow them out of my room. Jurian leads Yay. the way, and I follow after her. Garland brings up the rear, his eyes low as he constantly surveys our surroundings. Night around us is cold and still, but the quiet only makes me more anxious. Bard usually appears in situations like this. Is he not here? And I feel so useless having to be rescued like this. Garland reaches out to place a hand on my shoulder. We're all down. I nod, not trusting my own voice. Garland stands at attention as we continue slowly moving forward. Eventually, a figure moves to block her path. Let me guess, Farg. Sure. She has a ponytail. Why? Yeah. And what is this? You've only noticed her ponytail, the bow. Yeah, I never noticed she had a ponytail. Oh. I can't really see the bow too well. Oh, yeah, it does kind of blend I in with her coat. Like a short bob. I did not know she had a ponytail either till right now. So. Okay, I'm glad it wasn't <laughs> just me. I thought it was a bob. Yep. Nope. Ponytail. Not move. Drew and Garland, however, already have their swords out. Deadly metal glares in the gray of the gl gray glow of the moon. Oh, it's, it's Mithros. Oh. Okay. Oh, thank God I swapped voice. <laughs> Here, the fairy had given up. Mithros. That's not good. That actually would have been a lot better if it was Vark. <laughs> yeah. Her voice is a low growl. It's so full of malice it makes the ha hairs in the back of my neck stand up the end. Let us pass. And if I did, where would you be taking the princess? Jurian's shoulders tense. Garlean gestures to Mithras from behind her. I could lie, but it would also just be easier to just kill you. You're yeah, as thirsty as ever. Have you kind seen the color of her eyes? It's kind of attractive, I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, <laughs> I cannot allow your mischief to continue. Meanwhile, <laughs> Garland's ready to punch Mithras for that. <laughs> I see why you like her. <laughs> <laughs> Mithras has just begun to raise his hand when Jurian darts forward, her sword gleaming as she raises it to slice at his arm. Sir Mithras howls, falling hard to the ground as he curls onto himself just to cradle his injury. Oh, that's because he's a little bitch. Go! Quickly! The remaining pilot is all but shattered as we run away from Mithras. Though he's in pain, I can still hear his voice call out from behind us. Do not think this will be so easy, princess. Wow! I ignore him and keep running, not daring to look back. Oh my god! He's been running for a while now. My legs are beginning to go numb. Only a little longer, princess, and we'll be out. You're doing well. I can do no more than nod as I force myself to keep running. I'm pathetic. I'm slowing them down so much. There, I can see the exit. Watch out! Oh god. Jorian falls back to evade the explosion and bumps into me in the process. Moments later, however, she's once again standing at the ready with her sword. Garland sets his hands firmly on my shoulders to help me regain my balance. What was that? A familiar face emerges oh, from the smoke, no. her expression <laughs> cold. Here comes Mama! <laughs> oh no! Mama's here. Lisette. Mother. I didn't want to believe Mithros, but here you are. That little snitch. What, you didn't want to believe the little bitch? Princess, get back. Mother turns to face Jurian and Garland, her expression full of c contempt. I remember you, Jurian Valente. And you as well, Garland Bur Belrot. Oh, crap. I thought I was rid of Alicaster's pests. We do not work for Sir Alicaster. No, you and your pet have changed allegiances, haven't you? I get it. What? What did you call him? I get it. The smile on Mother's face is bright and cruel. It sends chills trailing down my spine. Is that not what he is? I'm not right here or anything, it's fine. His face is just like, ugh. 
Mother casually wow. waves the hand at Garland, who remains quiet. He follows you around like a lost puppy. What did this man do to deserve to get slammed so much? Jeez. Exist, apparently. He's a good he dude. So... Just keeps going. He is so desperate for a scrap of affection that he would do anything for you, regardless of his own pride. I'm right here. <laughs> It is admirable how well he knows his commands. Stop it. Come, Garland. <gasps> Sit. Garland. What? Somewhere in the distance, Vark is like being mad for Garland. <laughs> Good boy, Garland. Damn, this poor man. Shut up! Jerry and don't. But his words come too late. Jurian rushes forward, her body nothing but a blur, her teeth buried in savage hatred. Savage hatred! Jurian is fast, but Mother is faster. She raises her hand and sends Jurian back with a terrible flash of light as Garland catches her. And you defend his honor as if he were some poor maiden. How pathetic. Garland's voice is soft as he studies Jurian. Jurian, please. She's just trying to get a rise out of you. I know that! Jurian throws his hands off, a murderous look in her eyes as she glares at Mother. Mother remains in the same place, smiling that terrible smile of hers. She's amused by this, nothing more. Get the princess out of here, Garland. But what are you saying? I am not leaving you here. Once she's safe, come back for me. Jurian finally turns to look at him, a soft smile on her face. Trust me, Lan. There's a long moment of silence as the two gaze at each other. Unspoken words pass between them, and eventually, Garland caves. Alright. Both of them tighten their grips on their swords. Are you done? <laughs> I love this woman so much. <laughs> Mother hasn't moved, but her presence is the small tunnel small is overwhelming, and her <laughs> magic smothers the very air. Jurian sinks into a stance, her body loose and poised, seemingly unperturbed. Ready when you are. Mother does not attack. Instead, she turns to face me without one gr with one graceful movement. Please that stop this nonsense. This is not the time for games. This is the perfect time for games. Be a good girl and go back to your room. Fuck you. Stand your ground or reason with her. Me being me, I say stand your ground. I, I will blow up this tunnel, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Stand your ground. Okay. Stand it. All right, stand your ground. I will blow up this tunnel. I'll blow you up, mom. Dearest one. I stand resolute and take strength from Garland's steady presence behind me. What Mother is doing is wrong. What she wants isn't right and has never been right. What she's done to the king, what she's done to Angiel. How am I meant to look at her the same way? My voice is quietly when I find my voice is quiet when I finally speak. No. What? I take a deep breath and look her in the eyes. No. I will not return to my room. Mother expression is unexpectedly calm as she looks at me. My own daughter would choose these traitors and liars over me. Is my love so inconsequential to you? Yes. Has she ever truly loved me? Mother, if your love is what love is meant to be, I do not want it. Mother is not who I thought she was. When I, look, when I look at her now, all I can see is what she truly is. Oh. Evil. Yay. Clearly, you have become corrupted during my absence. I suppose it must be the work of the... Infern... Infernal fairies. You got there. Never mind. Once I have destroyed each and every one of them, you will return to me, my daughter. She raises her hand and light curls around her fingers. But before she can cast her spell, Jurian is at my mother's side. Oh. Jurian's sword glints as it slices through the air and through mother's clothes. 
<gasps> Go. Princess, come on. <gasps> but Jurian, if we leave her alone. Leave her alone. Garland Hurry. pulls me away from my mother and Jurian as the battle begins. I hear the dull clatter as metal of metal as we run it, and can see the flashes of light even as we escape back the way we came. Garland. We've not gotten far when I force Garland to stop. Garland! It's only when I grab his shoulder that he stops and turns to look at me. Princess? We can't leave her there. Maybe I can convince Mother to let her go. Do you really think you can convince that witch? I... I can try. My job is to keep you safe. Mother has all the power of the crystal... The Crystallum Tenumbarum at her disposal. I forced myself to say it. Dream will not last long. Garland, you have to know this too. Drian might know as well. Garland's jaw hardens and he stares at me, not truly looking at me, but through me. Garland, please. We can't let Jurian die. Not when we might be able to do something about it. Garland stares at the ground, his expression conflicted. I know he cares for her and that's why he must go back for her. Garland closes his eyes briefly. When he opens them, I know he's made his decision. Yeah. When we return to the scene that is very different. Blood splatters the tunnels walls, and Jurian is on her knees, bent forward, her face away from us. Well, there is nowhere to be seen. Jurian! Garland suddenly in front of me, mindly, mindlessly racing towards Jurian. Jurian! Jurian! All at once, she seems to come alive. She gasps out for breath and coughs. Garland! What are you doing here? I told you to. Her voice wavers as Garland crouches down in front of her. He folds himself around her and pulls her gently to his chest. His eyes are shut tight as he buries his face into her hair. Jurgen chokes back a sob as she reaches up to hold him tightly. I exhale in relief. Both of them are alive and safe. You idiot! I told you to get her out! A princess gave me permission to disobey an order. He lifts his head to smile back at me. Heresy. She outranks you, Jurian. At least as far as titles are concerned. Garland slowly guides her to her. And that's feet. the excuse I'm sticking with until I get blown up. What happened? <laughs> the queen disappeared and I. Jurian suddenly stops. We hear it at the same time a terrible ripping sound like the air itself is being torn. I see the slither of shadows and unnatural light in the darkness until I realize what's happening. My panicking mind is only able to process everything that happens in slow motion. Okay, it's like Varg or Mithros or... Oh, no! Uh, no. Mother appears behind <laughs> Jurian, waves to strike. I see the horror in Garland's face and the acceptance and determination. I try to cry out a warning, anything, but I can barely breathe. Garland pushes Jurian towards me and out of the way as he rushes my mother. No! Oi. No! Ooh, that's a dead Garland. At the same time, Gar well, he might be just dying and not dead. I'm no, hopeful. Bitch dead. <laughs> oh, no, no, bitch dead. At the same time, Damn, Garland she impales him barehanded. What a badass. At the same time, Garland pushes forward. My mother holds out her hand. It takes only a single heartbeat for her to plunge into Garland's chest. What is this? A front-facing visceral attack from Bloodborne? <laughs> hey, maybe. Garland! Nah, bitch dead. What a loyal pet, giving your life for hers. Garland's face crumbles in on itself. Even from where I am, I can hear Mother twist her hand inside him. Oh god. And how sad. Mother wrenches her bloodied hand out and Garland falls to the ground. You fool. You didn't even tell her that you loved her. You... Jurian runs at my mother, a desperate cry of grief and rage escaping from her. Jurian, no! She's too weak from her own injuries, she can barely hold up her sword. I'm unable to speak oh and Jurian rushes down towards her own death. But mother simply sidesteps, her expression disinterested as Jurian falls to her knees. I was kind enough to kill him slowly for you, so you could say your goodbyes. Mother turns to face me. The blood drips from her hand down her dress where it congeals and oozes like black tar. Do you understand now, dearest one? 
This is what you have made me do. This is what I must do now to all those who have corrupted you. You were the one who forced my hand. Do not forget that. Get it? Forced my hand? <laughs> For a moment, the air, air it's funny. disappears, and a terrible silence fills the darkness. By the time the air comes rushing back into my starved lungs, Mother is gone. The tunnel is empty. Real quick. Okay. I will be Light flicker at the aftermath of her disappearance. The only thing I can hear, apart from rushing and blowing my ears, is Durian's sobs. 